want you to exclude every person in this hall and be the only person. Just be the only person with your God in this hall tonight. Revelation chapter 3 verse 6. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. No one man is saying what the Spirit said. That's your breakthrough ticket in these last days. What the Spirit is saying to you as a member of the church. Revelation chapter 3, verse 6. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. I am triumphing by what the Spirit is saying to me. It's a private thing. This is why I said, just exclude every person here and then tune in to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And catch what the Holy Ghost is saying through this verse. Now no way no man after the flesh. That's how we operate here. Revelation chapter 3 verse 6. Nicholas, you are welcome. From Inugu. You are blessed. Second Samuel chapter 23 verse 2. The Spirit of the Lord spake by me. So you can have it littered in all pages of scripture. Revelation 1 Samuel. I am riding by the voice of the Spirit of God in all facets of my life. Second Samuel chapter 23, verse 2. The Spirit of God spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. And the God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. It's all about the rock, God, his word, and his spirit. He that ruled among men. That's just one facet. He that wants to walk in dominion. So it's everything. <laughs> You need uh, the spirit of the Lord and his war. You want to ruin your financial war. Must entertain the fear of God. It shall be as the light of the morning. Bright, sir. Clear, sir. Even as a morning without clouds and as a tender grass springing out of the heart by clear shining after him. Before this year runs out, people will see your financial life by clear shining after him. The reign of revelation. When the spirit of God is one speaking to you, you have your ears, sir. Clear. Nothing to hide. My wife is here. My handset is accessible to her 24 7. <laughs> That's why this one is a high blood pressure. Anytime she demands, my boy is eh? clear shining. By clear shining, nothing to hide. As a light of <laughs> Sit down. I tell you, you are welcome. <laughs> Any person I just talked about just appeared today. <laughs> Thoughts are powerful. <laughs> uh, they are magnetic. Mm. When you think about somebody, you magnetize who he is. So you think positively. You magnetize positive things. Yes. 
God has something by his spirit for everyone here. My light has come to work in financial dominion. You will see the reality of financial dominion in your life. He that ruled over men. You rule over scarcity. You rule over sickness. When it is the spirit of the Lord speaking. And his word is, you become a ruler. You rule by the spirit of God. And by the word of God, you rule wherever you find. That's why I'm not after man. I was in a place, and when the spirit was spoke by me, and he saw even people that matter were tempted. That's what you need. Revelation chapter 3, verse 6. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord saith. And it means still speaking, sir. That's your greatest asset in the journey of life. Many years back, we were in Israel. And we got to the Sea of Galilee. That water is bubbling with life and fresh. You know why? It gives and gives. It takes and gives. Takes and gives. So it's bubbling with life and ever fresh in Galilee. When I look at my face, I was almost tempted to drink the water. Fresh, bubbling with life. And then we took our discussion to a place called the Dead Sea. Two different things. It takes and takes and doesn't give anything. So it's stagnant and stinks. Over to you. We have finished service. I make your choice. The difference between the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee is that the Sea of Galilee takes and gives. Takes and gives. And so it's bubbling with life. And it's ever fresh. Yes, but the sea, the dead sea takes and takes and takes and doesn't give out anything. So it's stagnant and it stinks. So make your choice. And we share him and go home. You want to be the sea of Galilee then? Take and give and take and give. So any human being who tells you giving this. I saw this in life. I used the water I took, water bottle, finish it, and replace with the Sea of Galilee. Fresh. I was almost tempted. True. I saw this in life. So nobody can tell me that's what this means. Bubbling with life. Materially, spiritually, and financially. I'm a giver. You are not doing any person any favor when you give. It's lack of understanding that you, you are waiting for someone to say thank you. No, just say thank me. When you understand it's a matter of giving and you give to those who understand it, you'll be offended because they won't say thank you. <laughs> you are waiting to be thanked when you are, should be the one rejoicing. That you. It's not possible for you to leave this place today and remain where you are financially. It's not possible. It's not possible. The Galilee and the Dead Sea illustration is enough for you. 
to zero in on giving. The first step you take towards a life of financial dominion is knowledge. There is God's supernatural economic system and there is man's economic system. Man's economic, God's economic system is superior to man's economic system. There is no such thing as lack, want, recession, or depression in God's supernatural economic system. There is no one lack, want, recession, or depression in God's supernatural economic system. There is no lack, want, recession, depression at all times. His resources are as eternal as himself, inexhaustible. So there is no lack, want, recession, or depression in God's supernatural economic system. So over to you, which one you want to operate? Well, I want to introduce you to God's supernatural economic system. Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. But ye Philippians know also. So we can remove Philippians, but ye war guides know also. <laughs> that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, he sent in once and again unto my necessity. Not that I desire a gift, but fruit that may abound to your account. That is God's supernatural economic system, Nicholas. Giving and receiving is God's supernatural economic system from Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. Now, ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but ye only divine. Tonight, your mindset will, will assume a new kind of set. Yes, that will begin to operate God's supernatural economic system. You, are, you can pray which you want, you want to. You want natural man's own to is there, but God's own is superior. There is no lack, want, recession, or depression. Constant flow. What do I call it? Uh -huh. In season, out of season, constant flow. That's why it's superior. Uh, it's as eternal his process, uh, as eternal as himself. It exhausts you. I've never been choosing where I am. You could be in the dry place, you will send a board to come and feed you that he fed uh, the woman. Yeah, so it's constant. Sir. People send me things from all over. In one room here in Kubwa. I don't knock on doors. I just proof this law. Since it's a proof of Christ. You know, I'll be following my father. He said, Why only fools that proves. Yeah. And second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. Since he seek a proof of Christ speaking, yeah, he's speaking in all areas of my life, including finance. That's why I'm sharing with you of what 
I am experiencing, sir. It's so real. So real. That I don't have any person to envy. Just that I'm coming. Yes. They are in levels. The number one step to take towards financial dominion is to understand that what you are is far more important than what you possess. <laughs> Nicholas, what you are is far more important than what you possess. That's your number one step who you are. When you know who you are, your identity will deliver to you your inheritance. <laughs> that, when he said to me, I couldn't contain myself in my room today. I got it fresh. Who you are is far more important than what you possess. For a man's life consisted only in the abundance of the things he possessed. So what is it then? It's who you are. When you know who you are, your identity will deliver to you your inheritance. You know the son of your president, he doesn't need to struggle for identity for inheritance. He knows who he is. He's the son of your president. So the inheritance is The mere knowledge of who you are delivers your inheritance. Jesus came to the scene. He asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? Pastor Henry. I learned a lot when I look at the children of God, I want the apostle of faith. <laughs> Just who they are. <laughs> are you a child of God? <laughs> Daniel. Gasaba to salade shakara taleyaka. The beginning of anxiety is the end of knowledge. <laughs> People are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why you have, when you have access to knowledge, you are at rest. The beginning of anxiety is lack of light. It's the end of light. The moment you are in a the, the, you are in the alley where there is light and there is power outage. You are anxious. When light goes off, you are anxious. So the beginning of anxiety is the end of light. So when you have access to light, Peter, you are calm. At rest. Financially. What you are is far more important than what you possess. You are a child of God. Your inheritance is inexhaustible. I will take you through what Paul said to the Fibian church. Now, ye Philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For every in Thessalonica, you say you was again unto my necessity. 
Not because I desire it, but I desire food that will ab- may abound to your account. I like what he said in this. But I have all. That shall be your testimony. I can't hear your email. In this season we are in, you shall have all. Some of you are going to have a problem of where you are will be too small to contain what is coming your way. You will be forced. You will be forced to live where you are. To a bigger place. Now, just receive what I'm telling you. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, where you are will be so small by virtue of what is coming your way. You will be forced to relocate to a bigger place, a finer place. Yes, sir. I have all. You can't have all and remain where you are. (laughs) Can I say, I have all? That means you are changing location. (laughs) You hear testimony galore this Sunday. But I have all and abound. That's how every one of us that shall be abounding. In every area of life, you shall abound. You will abound financially, in health, in breakthroughs, in everything good. You shall abound. Sir, I've been abounding. I have been abounding, sir. I feel like crying. <laughs> I have been abounding in health, joy, peace, faith, goodness. Anula. I have all and I abound. I am full. You'll be full. Oh. My God will terminate emptiness in your life. Full, sir. Say, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an order of a sweet man, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. That's God's supernatural economic system. Verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need. That's God's supernatural economic system. All your need. According to his riches in Christ Jesus. That's his economics. That's where it's coming from. After this service, that's it shall be the testimony of everyone here. Amen. This is what I'm enjoying, sir. According to his riches in Christ Jesus. That's how every best here will be operating. According to his riches in Christ Jesus. In these times we are in. What will connect you to God's supernatural Economic system, we discuss two of it. Like I told you on Sunday, we shall be dissecting. I'll be giving you in a consumable bridge so you don't suffer indigestion. Uh, the one you'll be able to digest. Just two. And to blow up your financial status. Number one, putting the kingdom of God first and the need of people. You want to operate God's supernatural economic system? Put the kingdom of God first and the need of people. 
put the kingdom of God first. Matthew chapter 19 verse 29. And everyone, can I say everyone? everyone? That means everyone can plug into this system, sir. Everyone can assess <laughs> financial domain. And everyone that has forsaken house. Brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, lands. For my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall have everlasting. It was a wonderful. Oh, uh, this is that's Jesus speaking. I was a graduate uh, assistant. At uh, CST, many many years, but I just came out of a uh, service here, and I got uh, as a, an assistant lecturer, no graduate assistant, Kanwa Polytechnic. As a young, uh, just finished my service here and trying to enjoy life, so I applied for loan. At least they make my one room pay. My, my my room my one room look fine, furniture loan, so I could look. <laughs> they gave my furniture loan. I'm not saying you should do it. This is my life. I'm sharing with you. And then, uh, one evening, I was at Ramad Close when God said, uh, they are the building, the first building in Naraiden before it moved to Lagos. The Holy Ghost said, Don't do it. Oh. It's me, he said. It's me, he said. So, it's loan, it's not my money, it's loan. See? And everyone who has forsaken, I've, that loan was my house, but I've forsaken it. <laughs> he that sows in tears, Shari. If I ever knew that that seed was a seed that I could become a pastor and stand here and go to Living Faith Church and be what I am today. So, what you are is far more important than what you possess. Luke chapter 18, verse 28. It's staying the same thing. The same thing. One is for my name's sake, the other is for the kingdom of God's sake. 28, 29. For the kingdom of God's sake. He said, No man that has left house or parent or father or, or, or wife. Or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more? I like that. There is manifold more for somebody here. Amen. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what's on ground in your life, but you have manifold more Amen. of whatever thing you have. Who shall not receive manifold more? In this present world or time, and in the world to come, everlasting life. So, putting the kingdom first and the need of others is supernaturally rewarded and compensated a hundredfold. So, when you see my father, the apostle, keeps singing Matthew 6 33. He gave you two more to add to Matthew 6.33. Matthew chapter 19 verse 29. And everyone. Don't exclude yourself. Don't exclude yourself. There is nothing good any person is enjoying that is not for everyone. Hallelujah. 
You can't buy God with money. Let me say this to every person seated here. For everyone who comes to God, open your ears, your spiritual ear, and hear what the Spirit is saying. You have everything good that everyone has. Take my word. Take my word here. In this place, assorted cars will be packed here before we move from this place. I have, I have everyone mentality. Any good thing that the Lord has opened your eyes to see is because He wants you to have experience yes, it. Too. So don't be jealous of wherever you see. Everyone, sir. Everyone. The difference between you and them is what they are doing what you are not doing. That's just it. Sir, I engage scriptures and I'm having a word that I buy the pages of scriptures every day. Yeah, what he said in Psalm 82, beginning from verse 1. God standed in the congregation of the mighty. Can I say, I'm one of the mighty ones? I'm one of the mighty men. I'm telling you, mighty. He judged among the gods. That's you. Who you are. Is far more important than what you possess. When you know your identity, your identity delivers to your inheritance. It's your identity that delivers to your inheritance. Who do men say that I am? You can't live beyond the inheritance of your father. So when you make your natural father your inheritance, that you are limited. But this God whose inexhaustible storehouse is your access. Don't limit yourself, sir. Don't limit yourself. There is nothing wrong with being wealthy. Thou shall remember the Lord that God for it. He said, I give you the power to get wet. So there is nothing wrong with being worthy. It is biblical to be rich. Hallelujah. The only wrong thing is on biblical practices. Kara kapos saka ka katos. To receive God's supernatural resources, you must operate in his own supernatural economic system. So, he forbids unbiblical practices. There is nothing wrong with being wealthy. It is biblical to be rich. The only thing that is wrong is unbiblical practices. When you are exposed to the world way of making money, God does not want it. On biblical practices, opens you up to make you financially vulnerable. And you become a victim of scammers. Why? Because you want to imbibe the unbiblical practices of get rich quick theory of life. It's unbiblical. You want to make a fast one. That's not in the kingdom. Many, including believers, have fallen as victims in the hand of scammers. Why? Get rich quick theory. That's not the biblical way. So they come to you quickly. Fast. Uh, that's not the Bible. The Bible was given and receiving. Well, the act remained. So you need patience. 
to allow what you sow. That's the Bible. You need to know the patience, my father, the apostle, behind the scene. Those days when it started in Kaduna, when uh, the cup of tea takes, there is no milk. You need to ask him the story of <laughs> giving us the way you have to wait. So many things. You want to make a get quick system. That's not God's economic system. That's not how God operates. That's why you take what is not your own. That's why you sell your body. That's get quick, rich glory of life that makes you financially vulnerable. You fall into the hand of schemers. You do things that is unbiblical. Unbiblical practices comes from get rich quick system. I knew I had to patiently go through the process. So I refused to take what is not my own. And I was called names. It will mean anything. No, it will mean a lot. God's supernatural economic system forbids that you engage in unbiblical practices. That's why everything is laid here. We shall be dissecting the things required. Giving this one, no, it's not all. Diligence. Patience. Sacrifice. For, there are so many. So, no many people will wait for that. <laughs> yeah, we tell you the truth. I will have fallen victim of so many quick get rich theory. That some men are biting their fingers. Hear what he said. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. But godliness and contentment is great gain. That's biblical practice. In working in financial dominion. Godliness. So what you are is far more important than what you possess. So when you see a thief. A, an armed robber. Either in the office by pen. Or by day robbery of gun. They are all the same. <laughs> armed robber in the office. By changing figures. You are an armed robber. One is by pen, one is by gold. On biblical practices. And you see him inside him. The latest car. He has that Jeep. People admire. But what you are is far more important than what you possess. Inside the car is a thief. So what you are is far better than what you possess. <laughs> he goes to his flashy house. You open the gate on its own. What you are, ah, that's a thief entering that kind of house. Brace, slash, slab, slab. This man, when he sleeps, whether he's either on a bed of six spring or 20, is who you are that is sleeping on that bed. So, what he has is far more important than what you possess. People say, Well, the man. It's a car, but God sees a thief. And then you, you, come, you came back from outside place and then you a lot of money. You, you can't explain where you get that money from. And your parents receive it. 
You won't tell them. They hail you what God is saying. She has sold her body. So who you are is far more important than what you possess. They gave her a car. But she exchanged with her body. You will hear this in many churches. Because we are in a time of get quick rich theory of life. <laughs> I know of a woman. You know what pissed off her, her son that was an arm robber? Anytime he brings money to her, she said, I better go to my bed hungry than to eat this. So those children that get the money they stole and gave it to their parents and they buy chicken and eat. All their children are dead. But this one, because she couldn't take what her, her son is giving her, his life was preserved. You don't know what you are doing to your children when they just bring some things to you and you just grab it. You can't even tell them, where are you going? One thing about my wife is this. Who gave you this money? To be on this list. Because who you are is far more important than what you possess. Stand to your feet. Can I hear you say to your next person, you can't buy God with money. Say to your neighbor, a clean heart and a clear conscience is worth much more than good. Nicholas, you travel for a to come and hear this word? <laughs> Light. <laughs> I say, what guy is global? Let me say it one more time. Money is a tool to be used, not a treasure to be admired or desired. A clean heart is a true treasure. <laughs> the heart. Where your heart is, there is your treasure. That means <laughs> money is not a treasure to be desired. Money is a tool to be used. You buy your car, you buy food for someone. It's a tool, not treasure. By the time it becomes treasure to you, you are lost. That's why you find it difficult to give. Even in the skin of because it's treasure to you. It's not a tool to you. You know, bris slash shit, I am excited when I see a hungry person. It's a tool. Mm. The guy is, is full and then he blesses me. Like the widow that sent a text to me. You'll be consistently faithful. I've never seen known her face to face. But you're perceived by the Spirit of God that she, she's a widow indeed. So it's a tool to me, it's not a treasure. When money and the desire for it becomes an obsession. You are lost. When money and the desire for it becomes an obsession, nothing satisfies. Your peace of mind is gone. When money and the desire for it becomes an obsession, your peace of mind is gone. Uh, your wonder of life ceases. A person's life turns to be nothing more than just pursuing material things. When money becomes an obsession, the next thing is pursuit of material gain. And nothing satisfies. So, contentment is destroyed because godliness and contentment is a great gain. So, how much do you want to be content? Five billion. 
And then when you hit five billion, just a little more, six billion. It destroys contentment. How much do you want to be content? There's no ceiling. How much do you want? How much? How many cars do you want to be content? He has five. And then he goes on. He saw another latest one. How many shoes do you want to wear to be content? It's immeasurable. So, content. <laughs> when anxiety begins, contentment ends. I want you to be ready for a supernatural takeoff on Sunday. Woo! Let's take the communion and go. But godliness and contentment is great gain. How much do you want? How much money do you want to be content? How many cars do you want to be content, Joshua? I saw somebody with 100 cars. 700 cars. Contentment? Hear what he said. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and red, let us be there with content. For they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful lust. Foolish. Now, hear this. To ignore and overlook all sense of wrong and right and morals for the sake of money is the most foolish thing to do as a believer. The most foolish thing to do as a believer is to ignore and overlook all sense of right, wrong, and morals for the sake of money. For the sake of money. You ignore all what is right. And embrace what is wrong. Because of money. Is the most foolish thing to do. You will be delivered tonight. Amen. You discard your morality. morality. Say so you go to bed with somebody. For the sake of money. Or material gain. Many are involved in things that are wrong. Because of greed for material gain. It's the most foolish thing to do. Sir, all those fellows we grew up together that were driving cars that you can't, they can't explain where they got you from. Virtually all of them are in the grief. And when I was walking, they were laughing at me. I'm sorry. To ignore and overlook all sense of right and wrong and morals for the sake of material gain is the most foolish thing to do as a believer. You won't be foolish again. You won't be foolish again. You receive strength. Yes. How many clothing do you want to be content? You just step into a shop. You just see another latest again to add to the ones you have. It's a new day for you. We have explored two things here. Contentment and putting the kingdom of God first. For that there will be ritual into temptation and is there. And many foolish and hurtful laws which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some converted after have erred from the faith. 
and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, so who you are is far more important than what you possess. But thou, O man of God, follow after righteousness. Who you are, godliness. Who you are, faith. Who you are, love. Who you are, patience. Who you are, meekness. Who you are, they are fighting the good fight of faith to lay hold of eternal life. We are unto we are called. And I profess a good fortune before many witnesses. Ah. You will sleep well tonight. Amen. You won't live your life to impress any human being. Amen. You just be enjoying yourself. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. On Sunday, we'll arrive at our realm of financial dominion. Let me say this to everyone here. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. And congratulations. In Jesus' mighty name. You are here tonight, you are not born again, wherever you are, before you partake of the communion. I would like you to put your right hand on your chest and say this was after me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I come to you today, save me. I believe in my heart that you die for me. And on the third day, you rose from the dead. Come into my life. I read my name in the book of life. I am born again. Shall we please bless the communion? It shall be to you for strength, Amen. vitality, Amen. contentment. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. May your money not have you. <laughs> May your money not have you. The right is to have money, not money to have you. In God's eyes, when you give a cup of water to any person, it brings reward. Just a cup of water. Just cup of water. That's the power of giving. It's not just money. Cup of water, sir. Let giving be your natural lifestyle. What do I say? If you don't have anything to give, give somebody a smile. People don't know. That. When I'm going, I see hard faces. I say, hey, I've got, uh, that's why I will sow. I'll just sow a smile. There is no, uh, no matter how hard that face you see, you begin to. <laughs> Just smile with somebody, just smile. You people don't know how to do it. It's to get giving. Always have to Give somebody a smile. Look at yourself in the mirror and give yourself a smile if you don't have money. You are so easy. Turn everything to be a seed. What do I say? Not just money. Turn everything to be a seed. When you are praying for somebody, you are sowing seed. I can't go dry because everything is seed for me. I pay you a visit. That's a seed. Nobody here shall be stranded. Amen. Sir, this month shall be your best month ever. Amen. You won't like any good thing. Amen. Just come here and assess the secret. It's a new day. Amen. Tonight you will sleep deep. Amen. You will wake up laughing. Amen. The light shall fall upon you in pleasant places. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. And congratulations. When money and the desire for it becomes an obsession, you lose your spiritual equilibrium. You lose your peace. So thou shalt keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me, not on money. He has given you what you should take on. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. That's what will make you become. So what you are is far more important than what you have. It's a new day for you. You are blessed. Amen. Shall we share the goodness?